Hello there. Um, I'm Black Bright and good morning, good evening, good night, depending on which part of the world you're listening in from. Now, I want to talk about the RAISE Act. The RAISE Act stands for Reforming American Immigration for a Strong Economy Act. Um, and I'm calling it the RAISE or the FALL, depending on what way you're looking at it. Now, I must say I agree with the majority of it in principle. And I'm just going to read um, the, I think it's five sections in brief. Um, section one is just names the bill, the Reforming American Immigration for Strong Economy Act. Section two eliminates the diversity visa program. Currently, 50 visas are allotted annually in a lottery to applicants from country with low rates of immigration to the United States with no regard to applicant skills. Section three caps the number of refugees granted permanent visas to the United States at 50,000 a year. Still a lot, but OK. Uh, in line with a 13 year average. It also requires the president to report the annual number of refugees admitted to the United States. Section four maintains immigration preferences for the spouses and minor children of US residents, but eliminates visa preferences for extended family and grown adult family lend family members of the US. So yeah, it also creates renewable temporary visa for the elderly parents of the US. So basically, um, just supposing it was me coming over, um, the US, if I passed all the points, I'd be qualified to stay. My husband would be qualified to stay and my children. But the extended family, the uncles, the aunts, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, unless they've applied within the last year of the, um, I don't even know if it's coming out. I think it probably will. Um, when it was talked about, it was, I think, August 2017. So I think they're still refining it a little bit. But if it does come out, which I'm sure it will, and if you've applied within a year, I believe, of it being made law, then um, grandfathers only for some reason um, will be um, allowed if they already applied within that year. Um, section five um, replaces the current. Now, this is the one I've got the issue with. The main one I've got the issue with. Um, Section 5 replaces the current employment based immigration system with an immigration point system akin to the systems used in Canada and Australia. The points category are based on predictors of immigrants' success and economic contribution. Up to 140,000 employment based visas will be issued annually to the highest scoring applicants. Now, just briefly, the Section 5 C and D describe the points based system. Applicants earn points based on education, English language ability, high paying job offers, age. Well, I'm not sure about that because that's a bit of discrimination, isn't it? Unless what they're saying is you can't be elderly. Yeah, I guess if you're elderly and you're a millionaire, they may let you in. But if you're elderly and you ain't coming with much, on your bike mate. Um, a record of extraordinary achievement hmm. and entrepreneurial initiative. Potential immigrants who were waiting entry under family preference categories eliminated by the raise are eliminated by the RAISE Act, but who do not qualify under the grandfather provision in section four are allotted points if they apply through the point system. Applicants must reach a 30 point threshold to be eligible for the employment based visa. Eligible applicants enter a pool of potential immigrants from which the US Citizenship and Immigration Service twice a year invite the highest scorers to file full applications and undergo security vetting. The only thing with that is that these extraordinary people, they're going to have to pay unless the company who wants them here pays the fee. They're going to have to pay that fee and they could lose that fee because there's no guarantee that they're actually going to get past this 
high point system because it's really quite scrupulous. So um, I think if they don't have to pay and it's the company that pays, all well and good. But if they're expected to pay and there's no guarantee that they get the job or get through this vetting system, then I think that's unfair. Immigrant households arriving through the point system are not eligible for federal means tested benefits for a period of five years. That makes sense. Um, and apparently if any of these immigrants who are applying to come over and they any of their members of family have used federal funds, um, it all has to be repaid before they can even get a look in. Um, yeah, lots of little bits and pieces, but that's the main thing. Now, my, my contention is mainly this. The reason why immigrants ended up in places like the US and the UK. I mean, people say, why are you talking about America for when you're British? What do you know? Keep your nose out of our business. The fact of the matter is, whatever affects America affects Britain. So it is my business. So putting that aside, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, so what was I saying though? Um, oh God, I must have really had a passionate moment there. Ah, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, if people, yeah, what I was going to say is if people, the reason why immigrants came to the country was not because they came over willingly or because they wanted to come to America or Britain. They were actually, well, their ancestors were actually brought over so when they were brought over, what were they brought over to do? They were brought over to pick cotton. They were brought over to run the mills. They were brought over to, you know, mine all the crap jobs, all the shit jobs. That's what they were brought over as slaves to do. So are you saying now that either um, white people are going to do those jobs that they used to feel were beneath them? back then are they now going to do those shit jobs while America wants only the creme de la creme to come into the US or what are they going to treat people retroactively and say okay you haven't got these skills so you get out of our country because you're a burden on our resources or are those ones that are already there going to remain that's another question I perfectly understand um, them needing to have qualifications, needing to have a good level of English. I perfectly understand all of that. It makes sense. No point coming over and you can't communicate well. I mean, that goes for any job you go for. You have to be able to articulate and communicate well. But my point is, is that if, if the American um, the slave masters are the ones that brought us over. And yeah, you might say that they brought the ancestors over, but from the ancestors, they had kids and you end up with the immigrants that have, are actually born in the States and have actually become citizens. And some of those were not qualified. Some of them didn't have the same access to good education like some white people because they were marginalized. So are you saying that now those people who used to clean, who was cleaning toilets, doing all the cleaning jobs, um, driving lorries, doing, you know, driving. The reason why I say this is because when Brexit was announced, we used to have a lot of Romanians and Polish um, doing the lorry driving. And that was like overnight, incredibly long hours. Nobody else wanted to do it. You know, you used to get the Brits who would do it for a couple of hours, but not to the extent that the Romanians would do it. And it could have been even considered unsafe, the amount of hours. But they worked the hours, they got paid, and that was their prime motivation. But now, once they, once they heard about um, the Brexit thing, all the EU, they've all scarped 10,000 
NHS staff have uh, uh, we've lost 10,000 NHS staff I don't know how many lorry drivers we've lost and that impacts deliveries doesn't it because they rely on lorry drivers for these online um, shopping and stuff and deli well delivering products and supplies so they need to be a bit more strategic thinking it's fine it's a great in principle but if the white people are going to get on their knees and start buckling under and start going into the cotton fields and start doing all the jobs that the black people were only deemed good enough to do then that is absolutely fine i'm sure if they pay um for all these immigrants housing back in their country africa or caribbean wherever they come from um latin america wherever mexico wherever they come from especially the ones who were born in the country if they if they decide okay we don't want you here we want a white america or we want a white uk i know you don't know america i know you, i don't know you don't know the caribbean i know you don't know africa but what we've done is we've built a compound it has to be a nice compound not no little shit place we've built a, you know a compound of houses with gardens with running water you know with with washing machines with everything and it's in a place called like gambia and it's a beautiful place and this is what we've set up for goodness knows how many people and we have 60,000 apartments and we'll pay um, your rent or whatever it is for the first three years they'd be gone in a they'd be gone in a kite they'd be gone in a minute they'd be gone you wouldn't even have to say it twice they would be gone you can have your white America back you can do all the dirty work you can do all the jobs that you never wanted to do as well as do the the, the, the high paying jobs as well but it would be you running your country and doing it from the bottom up and that would be absolutely fine the problem is is that they mustn't forget that they brought us over to do the dirty jobs to do that to do that um, you know the menial tasks that's why we were brought over and now if they're saying they just want people who are the creme de la creme you know the ones who are going to have you know expert entrepreneurial skills and who can you know really build up the country that's a little another kettle of fish and I'm sure there are immigrants who would love the opportunity but if they're doing it to exploit them just to make them pay to get on to to make them think that they've got a chance of reaching that 30 point system taking their money and then not allowing them on now that is not fair if they have to pay money they should be guaranteed at least you know to that point but if if the company like i said is the one who's paying for their application then that's fine there's no love loss apart from their time and whatever so i mean it can work fairly it can work fairly but just all i'm saying is just be just think about what the decisions are that the people at the top are making and how it may affect you Goodness knows how Brexit is going to affect us. I know we'll probably be up the creek without a paddle. But, you know, what can we do? You know, we don't have no power over what the government decides. We'd like to think things are in our best interest, but we know it's not. We know that the government doesn't want to bow down. We have a rebellious government. We have a government, we have a power hungry government. And we have a government who wants to look after themselves and their children. They don't give a toss about anybody else. But I have a funny feeling that everything's going to go tits up and they may even lose out as well. So we just have to watch this space, make sure we're treating each other fairly. And, you know, just don't forget, don't forget to put things into perspective. That's all I'm saying. Ciao for now.